Hello, Davo here. It's Wednesday. Waiting for the shop to open. Decided that I should probably do my, my vlog if I am going to keep these weekly. The week kind of sped up on me, kind of overtook everything. Partly because I actually did something I don't often do. I spent two whole days at home on the couch. Didn't go anywhere. That doesn't happen very often. In fact, I think most of my life that hasn't happened. I've always had somewhere I needed to be or felt obligated to be or had a responsibility to be there for most of my life. And even on the days when I wasn't required to be there, I often felt obligated to be there or basically I was scared that I was going to miss out on something special. Over the years, I've had a lot of people come up and go, man, if I could have been around when you were around, when I could have saw that band, oh my God, I'm so jealous that you saw that band, or you experienced that, or you were there when that happened. Yeah, it was great. Wonderful. But the reason why I did was because I left the house. I went out all the time. I, I just constantly went out. I lived pretty much a five to seven day weekend. For all of my 20s, most of my 30s, and now, eh, I mean, my 40s, and for the last three or four years, due to obligations, I live about a five-day weekend. And I did set up my life in a way where that was possible. A lot of people, I think, out there would like to go back to some golden age that never existed. It's that, it's that, uh, it's, it's like the... Uh, Buzzcock song, uh, nostalgia, I believe is what it's called. And basically the premise is he's nostalgic for a time that's yet to come. And I always kind of think about that. It's like, you know, back when whatever they're into, when that was happening here, or I was experiencing parts and bits and pieces of it, that was like a small, minute part of what was really going on. The reality is, is even, even in the most productive periods of my life where I was engaged and experiencing wonderful and great things, they were few and far between. And a lot of times, you kind of didn't get that vibe that anybody really cared or that it would matter. Uh, I was lucky enough that oftentimes I would think about it and go, you know, I should probably document this because it's kind of important or at least try to remember it correctly. So here's the thing. The reality of the situation is, is to have good experiences, you have to go through bad experiences. A lot of people want to blame the reason why people don't go out, they don't interact, and we're turning into a bunch of hermits is because they always say the internet. And yes, the internet's fantastic. I can't get enough of it. I contribute to it in various different ways, through social media, through my websites, through this channel. I, I think it's one of the greatest things in the world. The whole philosophy that you can find out any information about pretty much anything with just a few keystrokes is amazing. It's a renaissance beyond anything that was seen when the, the printing press was invented. Because unlike then, most of the, most of the public knows how to read. And they, it, it, they have internet access. There's a lot of people that believe that all of our entertainment now is going to be internet, that people prefer that, um, that our social interactions are now done through social networks. The reality of the situation is I don't think that's really the case because you don't really get the same effect. Granted, I can watch pretty much anything I want because I, I pay for services that allow me to do that. Back in the old day, it was kind of a hassle. You know, you'd have to go out, you'd have to rent something, or you'd have to remember to set the, the DVR or um, VCR, if you're as old as me, if you missed a show. Otherwise, you had to be at home at a certain time. I remember staying home on Friday night, which was really a struggle to see Twin Peaks, because that was the only way I was going to get to see it. For what, three years I did that? Two, two three years? Now, everything's on demand. So, in reality, if you leave the house, you're not missing anything. 
Now, the other important part of this fear of missing something, of having that wanderlust and going out and experiencing life for all it's worth, is finding people around you that are worth hanging out with. And I was lucky in that standpoint. I, I happened upon a bunch of very creative people, very intelligent people, most of them anyway, very entertaining people, and very passionate people. And most of those people can influence my life greatly and probably continue to, even the ones that I don't really have as much contact with as I used to be, as I used to have. And I wouldn't have experienced any of that if I would have stayed in. <laughs> you see where this is going? You shouldn't want to not leave the house. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, you can watch YouTube. You can watch Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and watch any movie you want to without leaving your house. Even some cases with Amazon, it's movies are in the theater. But just like real life, if you really start to dig into it, about 80% of it sucks. 20% uh, of it is okay. I found myself binge watching stuff that I never cared to ever see, mainly because it was either that or put my socks on and leave the house. I don't understand, I, I understand how you can get to that mentality. But there were the least productive periods of my life when I was like that. I never, I mean, never really was the same. And it's easy to go, okay, well, I'm not going out anymore. I don't interact with any of these people. They don't interact with me, so there must be nothing going on. And it's easy to get into that mindset, too. Then there's social media. Let's face it. It's a, it's a joke. It's not the type of interaction or conversations that you normally have with people. Because of the two things. If you're in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody, there's a point of discretion that's involved with that conversation. It allows you to say things that you wouldn't shout in a crowded room. With social media, you tend to shout in a crowded room. You never should ever post anything to the internet that you don't want other people to know. That's just the bottom line. That's the way life is. If you won't say it in a crowded room, don't say it on the, on the internet. Now, when you go out and you meet people and you hang out with your friends, it gives you that sidebar, that way to talk. You know, some people say, well, you just message them. No, not the same. Because you can't interact. You can't take up on all those social keys that we're used to when we talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. The raising of the eyebrows, the excitement in their eyes, whatever the hell it is that makes them react to you. Plus, you might notice all this stuff around you that you would not have seen. I used to get dragged places I didn't want to go on a regular basis by people, often kicking and streaming because I had to set defiance or determination or idea of what that place represented or what that group of people represented it. And I was unfounded in most cases. Sometimes, definitely found it. So it was those people I knew around me that would often drag me into situations I didn't really want to be in that allowed me to be exposed to a vast variety of things that I love now. That's the whole point of humanity. It's to make us better by being around one another. Now, live music isn't for everybody. Some people it's sports, some people it's coffee, some people it's uh, movies, some people it's, uh, I don't know, croquet, whatever it is, go out there, experience it. Because if you don't, you're probably going to miss something. And when you're older, whatever age you're at now, and you're sitting in your rocking chair somewhere or whatever your planned retirement and how you envision yourself in the future. Do you want to be that guy that goes, yep, yeah, um, didn't do anything. 
Or do you want to be that guy that has all of those great stories, all those wonderful things that they've experienced? And with those experiences, has that vast knowledge of wisdom. Um, I was watching a, a video with, uh, of uh, Utah Phillips the other day, and he was talking about, they were asking him, you know, if you don't know who Utah Phillips is, look him up. He's an interesting character. Don't 100% agree with just, well, not I, a lot of things I agree with him. Um, some of the politics I think is a little utopian for my taste. That's neither here nor there. But he talked about how we as a culture have been divided up by ages. This generation thing, which to be honest with you is nothing more than a marking term. And how he sees elders as like a river of information. When they asked him how he learned, he said, you know, learned about all this stuff and got his political views and got his musical abilities and everything else. He talked about it, he goes, because I was surrounded by this deep river of information from my elders. Now, I'm not saying go out and hang out with old people. What I'm saying is we're all part of that river. And the only way you get to drink from that river is if you actually leave the house. So think about that the next time you're like, eh, what am I going to do tonight? You're on your way home. You picked up dinner. And you're like, what am I going to do tonight? Oh, I'll stay in and watch, well, one of those terrible series on, on Netflix or one of the ones on Amazon Prime. Think about that. Do you have that first? Do you have that desire for something new? Go out there. Go out there and find it. So you're not going to find it on the couch. Well, so now to the live, per, uh, live music portion. Um, I haven't even looked at the footage yet, but what I think is going to be playing right now is going to be the broken ones. The broken ones are kind of a super group, so to speak. Uh, Michael has been around for a long time. Been in numerous bands in the Des Moines area that I really loved, uh, Street Urchins being one of them. Um, also, uh, the Jits was a good band. And uh, back in the 90s, Radio Caroline. Rob Og, <coughs> Rob's a dude, Rob's a guy. He's a man in five bands. <laughs> Skin of Earth, Make Your Mark, recently. And he will probably... Uh, could probably, if he was standing right next to me, name off seven or eight other bands he's currently involved with. He also was the guitarist in the Have Nots. Brian, he's also in the Mutts, and I think he's done some other stuff I can't quite think of right now. But anyway, here they are. From Des Moines, Iowa, The Broken Ones. Or, The Broken Ones. <laughs> See, I don't know if there's supposed to be a the in front of that. Here they are. <laughs> All right. We're the broken ones. This one's called I Hate the Broken Ones. Wow! Oh, you got 
Make your mark. They're an oi band from Des Moines, Iowa. Once again, you're going to see Rob Ogg on there, except this time he's playing guitar, not bass. I could go on to various uh, incarnations of this band and, and bands these guys have been in. Um, I'm not going to do that. A lot of people, yeah, recently I had a long conversation because I was explaining, because we had, uh, and I'm probably mispronouncing the name, Gouda from Italy. G-I-U-D-A. That says Gita, maybe? Gita? You know, I was only around him for about five hours, you think I would have asked. <laughs> anyway, and I was explaining to this person that it was an oi show. Um, Gouda, not really oi, they're kind of proto-punk, kind of that pub rock, but they're definitely where oi came from. And I, in the minute, you know, I brought up the word skinhead, shut down. He didn't want to hear anymore. And then I had to explain to him the whole process, the skinhead history and everything else, and how it wasn't really a racist movement, and that the media had blown it out of proportion, and everything else that's involved with that whole subject, which I could probably do a blog on that, or vlog, at some point. I think I already did one on mods, kind of the same thing. Though skinheads would hate me saying they're mods. Just like hipsters, I don't care what anybody says, hipsters are the new mods. I'm telling you. They've got funny facial hair, they're hip, they're right on the edge, they're mods. Uh, they hate that. Anyway, this is Make Your Mark. They are skinheads. They are not racist, nor should that even be a subject when you're talking about music. Make Your Mark from Des Moines, Iowa. Shack Shakers. Here we get into that swamp punk, that blues punk, that thing. Um, I've seen these guys before and I've been listening to their music. I think originally I was exposed to it back um, probably about the time they started. Somebody had sent me a disc and for one reason or another the show date didn't work out or I just didn't have the money at the time or what have you, but I ended up not doing them. Um, so it took this long for me to finally do them. Not in a physical sense. <laughs> But as in a talent bot promoter sense, as in I booked them and, and did the show. They always kind of reminded me of like a church revival, like Southern Baptist, Snake Charmin, Jump in the Bush, which is kind of Pentecostal, just blues and rock and roll and punk rock and everything and a little bit of hillbilly all combined up. Probably the thing they're most famous for is the uh, intro music for the HBO series, which is escaping my mind right now. The one that's got suck in it. Um, 
Something blood. Cold blood? No, that's in cold blood. It'll come to me. And I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about. Anyway, without further ado, here is the legendary Shack Shakers.
That's it. That's the end of the vlog. Sorry if I got too preachy. I hope I inspired you to go out and do something. Because only you can. Only you can. Only you can make that happen. And I go through that a lot of times. And I, I say this a lot of times. And a lot of people are like, I don't know. I don't know. Only you can make live music happen. Only you can make performing arts happen. Only you can make changes because it takes a crowd to do that. Sure, any smuck can get three of his buddies together or two of his buddies together, pick up an instrument, get up on a stage and perform. But to make it a live music experience, they need to have people in front of them. Otherwise, you know, they're playing in the garage. Just saying. Anyway, thank you for watching my vlog. Vlog number seven. Now, let's see if I can get the pointing right, because I keep wanting to go to that corner, but I think it's to this corner. So, uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, if you want to see some more of my vlogs, they're down here. If you would like to see some more live music, I suggest clicking here, because that's where uh, Lefty's live music thing is. If you would like to check out my personal website, here's a link up here. Other than that, have a good day. Enjoy yourself, because only you can.